So this really is the central part of our worship services here at Sunlight when we gather around his word. And what I'd like to do is ask that everyone open your Bible. And uh, as we're coming to the conclusion of one year and looking forward to the next, there's a passage in scripture that I think is very appropriate. And I'd like to have you turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 90. Now, if you didn't bring your own Bibles along, what I'd like to do is encourage you, there should be Bibles around you. To take one of those Bibles out, you can find the passage on page 424. We're going to be reading Psalm 90 together. As you're turning there, let me just say a few things about the passage we're about to read. In the Old Testament book book of Psalms, there are 150 Psalms. And uh, we are reading the 90th of those. Those Psalms are all in the form of poetry. And one of the interesting features of poetry, as compared to narrative or prose, poetry has as one of its uh, abilities the ability to evoke sort of an emotion. And uh, there are all kinds of different psalms that we have in the Old Testament book of Psalms. Uh, Some psalms are meant to evoke a sense of worship and praise. There are some psalms that orient us to joy and gladness. Um, There are some psalms where... There's a reflection, and and it's meant to evoke a sense of of grief or loss. These psalms are often called laments. And this psalm, which we're about to look at, Psalm 90, is one of those psalms. It's a lament, and it has as one of its purposes that of evoking this emotion of grief or or lamenting, sorrow. Uh, Another interesting thing about the psalms, they were written by different authors, A large majority of them were written by King David. The one we're about to look at in Psalm 90 was written by Moses. Undoubtedly, you know the story of Moses, how God at one point called him to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. So he went and he was the one who led them out of slavery in Egypt. And then as they wandered around in the desert for 40 years, Moses was the leader of the people. And at some point, Moses, who lived a a relatively long life, 120 years, he was able to sit back and reflect upon life. And as he reflects upon life and its meaning and purpose and what he encounters in life, he penned this psalm. And so this is the very word of God. We're going to read it together beginning in verse 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning, though in the morning it springs up new. By evening it's dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is 70 years or 80, if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, for your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants." Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all, the day, all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of our, the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Now, as I said, this psalm is in the category of lament. It expresses grief and sorrow. And um, so for those of you who might be just visiting with us for the first time today, not all of the Bible passages we talk about uh, evoke grief and sorrow. There are plenty which evoke joy and happiness and gladness. But I think there's something important that the Holy Spirit would teach us with his word here in Psalm 90. Moses at some point in his life steps back and reflects upon life itself, what it's all about. And as he surveys it all, his heart is filled with grief and he utters these words of lamenting. 
And if I were to summarize what it is that Moses says here in this psalm, I, I would probably put it this way. He grieves over the fact that life is brief, very brief, that it is almost meaningless, and that this brief and almost meaningless life is full of pain. And as he reflects upon that, and he thinks about it all at some point, finally, grieving over the entire situation, in verse 13, cries out, Relent, O Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on us. In the light of the fact that it's brief and almost meaningless and full of pain, like, Lord, do something here. Have compassion on us. Why does it have to be this way? How long will it be? Life is brief. If you look with me, beginning in verse 3, Moses says this. You return men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. He says, For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that's just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Generally, we think in our own terms of a thousand years as a really long time. We can't even, from our own perspective, comprehend how long a thousand years is. In fact, just 10, 11 years ago now, we celebrated the turn of a millennium. And we really marked that occasion because we said, wow, a thousand years of human history has just come to a completion. Uh, that was amazing to us. But Moses, as he talks about, says to God, that's just a twinkle of the eye. He, he says it's like a day that's just gone by. It's, it's over just like that. Or like a watch in the night. He says for God, a thousand years, which is really long to us, is just it's over in a second. He says, You sweet men away in the sleep of death. They're like the new grass of the morning, though in the morning it springs up new. By evening it's dry and withered. We've all seen things like this. Where in the morning, grass springs up. It's green. It, it looks great. It's full of life and vitality. But it, in the period of just one day, as the sun beats down on it, it starts to wither and even dies. He says, Our life's just like that, just like the grass. Springs up in the morning. In a very brief amount of time, we're withering and dying. That's what our life is like. Verse 10, he says, The length of our days is 70 years, or 80, if we have the strength. But their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass. And we fly away. In this life, we only get 70, maybe 80 years. Our life is like a book. You know, we... We open at the very first page. We're born. We have our first day. Then we have our second. Then we have our third. Then we have our fourth. We don't know when we're going to get to the end of the book, but each day we keep turning a page. At the most, we get 70 years, maybe 80, if we have the strength. And then finally, we turn that last page. Uh, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to put up on the screen a number. 25,550. That's the number for the day, 25,550. And I decided that uh, maybe today what I would do in this service is count from 1 to 25,550. So here I go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. No one's going to stop me. 29, 30, 31. You know, in the first service this morning, by the time I got to 15, people were like, okay, it's enough. You know, when you start out at 1, you're thinking to yourself, it'll take forever. He can't possibly. We'll be here till tonight. I mean, who knows when this service will let out? I and mean, it just seems like it's going to take forever to get to 25,550. The truth of the matter is that it, it wouldn't take forever. In fact, I, I actually calculated this out. Where's my clicker? If I counted from 1 to 25,550, I could count one number per second. It would take me exactly 7 hours, 5 minutes, and 50 seconds. And at the end of 7 hours, 5 minutes, and 50 seconds, we would conclude the service if you were still here. Here's what I want you to do. Everybody, I know a lot of you will have this. Take out your cell phone. If you have a cell phone with you, if you brought a cell phone, I want you to take it out. 
Uh, those of you who are texting, you can stop. <laughs> and I want you to, now we have something I want you to do with this cell phone. Okay, here's what's going to happen. I want you to turn your cell phone, get it going. I'm sure on your cell phone you have the same feature as I do, which you can set an alarm. I want you to set an alarm for seven hours, five minutes, and 50 seconds from now. So that'll be at, let's say, 7.09. So I want you to take your cell phone. I want you to set it the alarm to go off at 7.09. And if you're the one in your family who is doing this, at 7.09 tonight, when your alarm goes off, I want you to remember this number and shout it out, 25,550. <laughs> okay? That's your job. 25,550. We've done it. That's what time I would have concluded if we had gone on like that. I stopped at 30 to be merciful. So 25,550. And... Um, when you do that, I want you to reflect on this fact. Um, when I started out, you probably thought to yourself, he can't possibly. That would take forever. In 70 years, there are 25,550 days. And probably for most of us, especially when we're young, we're starting out at a very low number, we think that'll take forever. I'll never get to 25,550. You know, I'm about halfway through with 25,550 myself. And uh, even now when I'm counting 12,552, 12,553, 12,554, I'm saying to myself, this is never going to end. There are some people who are sitting in this room who are getting mighty close to 12,550. 25,550. There are some of us who are sitting in this room who have passed. 25,550. For those of you who have passed this number of days, I suppose that if we run around and interviewed you right now, it's not likely that you would say, it really did take forever. I think most of you who have reached this number would say, man, that actually went very quickly. I don't know about you, but for myself, it was just like yesterday. I'm in the backyard growing up with my two younger brothers. We're playing in the backyard with my dog. We're sitting in our sandbox. I'm enjoying shoveling. And all of a sudden, I'm halfway through this number. And I'm saying to myself, man, I was enjoying that. Give me my shovel back. I mean, most of us are probably like, where'd that go? And now I have three kids of my own. And it's like, what just happened there? And... As I talk to people, they say, hey, enjoy your kids now. It goes so fast. And I'm sure as we talk to those of you who are near 25,550 days or even beyond it, you would say, wow, it really, it really went by much quicker than I, than I thought. Moses is making this point. Our life is brief. Very brief. It can be over just like that. There's... there's a million sermons that could be preached on this. It's worthwhile. In this psalm, Moses says to God, teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Billy Graham was famous for this. He used to preach sermons. He says, listen, you don't know how many days you have left. Don't leave this place today without making a decision. Don't think to yourself, oh, I'll put it off. I'll have time later. It goes by just like that. He'd say, today's the day. You have to, in light of what I'm telling you, make a decision for Jesus Christ. Those are the type of sermons that he always preached. Well, Moses, as he's talking about this, I don't think per se that what he's trying to get from us is to say, wow, I guess actually our life is short. And then we start making resolutions. Well, I better do this and I better do that. I think actually his purpose is slightly different. It's not to get us to make resolutions, but instead to evoke some sense of sorrow and grief. He adds to this thought that our life is very brief by also expanding it and saying something like this, that our life is almost meaningless. 